almost 12 months ago, this town here, Nukolofa, on Tonga Tapu in the Kingdom of Tonga, burst into flames. Youths and others rampaged through the CBD in this town, setting fire to buildings. After two nights of destruction, 80% of Nukolofa was destroyed. What has happened to the aspirations of those who were demanding democracy at the time? And what exactly has happened here relating to democratic reform? But since the uh, 1611, the government, uh, they don't give up. They just uh, don't want to talk with us yeah. or even negotiate with us. My perception is being shaped by my study of history, of what is happening to the Louis of France and everything else. The people are going down, but it will come up again. So that's why I, uh, I asked the leaders of Tonga to be able, have the ability to read the printing on the wall, go back to history, because there is no man is an island, no, uh, no island is a planet. On Black Thursday, when news stormed through this nation's capital, setting fire to 80% of Nukolofa, Tonga's nobility was shaken to the core. One year on, the nobility has regained control of Tonga's establishment, and as host of the 2007 Pacific Islands Forum, it was determined to display to all that class had been restored. I do not believe that so-called uh, supporters of terrorism and criminal activities, I think they have lost it right to be representative for the people of Tonga. I'm not a terrorist. I'm only doing, I'm only doing my job. Terrorists? Why aren't those people arrested and charged if they are terrorists? Make such white blanket defamatory remarks about people if they're going to be compensated first before others, you're going to have another sore point coming up. On Black Thursday, November 16, 2006, Tonga's main island, Tonga Tapu, descended into chaos. I'm standing outside what remains of the Chinatown Hotel. On Thursday night, a group of youths turned up. The proprietors of the hotel asked them, urged them, to spare the hotel, but to take whatever they liked. And this was their answer. One expat New Zealander told me that a quarry truck was racing up and down these roads. It was looking for specific buildings in which to destroy. Youth gang mobs called the Bush Boys and the Deportees followed on behind. Fire bombs were unloaded off the quarry truck. Well, this is the result. A large public gathering had congregated on a park immediately adjacent to the Tongan government's legislative chambers in the capital town of Nukualofa. It was several thousand strong in number, and there was a shared expectation that the nobility, those who have ruled Tonga for hundreds of years, were to announce electoral reform and hand over the balance of power to democracy. On that afternoon, the expectation did not materialise, and as word spread among the people, 
outrage swarm. The arson attacks targeted businesses that had prospered under the monarchist government. By midnight on Black Thursday, 80% of Nukualofa was burning. The only buildings that were spared were those aligned to those who supported democracy. Two gangs, the Bush Boys and the Deportees, systematically set in train an inferno that destroyed the livelihoods of those friendly to the king. Who organised this? Was a faction of the democracy movement behind this? These are the charges levelled against Akalisi Pohiva and his people. Did you see this crisis coming and if not, why not? Good question. I think it took everyone by surprise. We have uh, reported very thoroughly to our government and no doubt other uh, countries represented here have done the same. Uh, the, the prolonged processes here of protest, uh, you need to go back several years to protests about restrictions on media freedom, restrictions um, on other things that we would take as being normal uh, in our countries. But um, this one, the latest uh, protest of last Thursday, uh, turned violent in a way that nobody predicted. So I think although we might say to ourselves we should have predicted it, uh, everyone is saying that. Indeed, the new Tongan king, George V, arrived at Parliament House to pure Victorian-style Tongan monarchy tradition. The people were barred from attending. The ceremony took place inside the ruined town of Nukualofa. Armed soldiers prevented Tongans from entering the area. Only nobles and special invitees were in attendance. The king said in his speech, all the proposals that are now in the public arena have the same ultimate aim, a more democratic form of parliament and government, but appropriate for Tonga, about which we all agree. With his appointed government of nobles shaken and isolated, protected by the military from its very own people, the king left the ceremony of the closing of parliament with an air of resigned dignity. The Tongan people, also rocked by the events of Black Thursday, remained numb and confused, longing for peace, for the spirit of the approaching Christmas to return, but haunted by the knowledge that a line had been crossed for this nation and that there was no turning back. small sector of Tonga's society that has enjoyed the privileges of power, prestige and control for centuries. The reason
reason why I, uh, I didn't attend the closing of Parliament. Uh, it wasn't any, due, uh, any uh, disrespectful to His Majesty or the government of Tonga, but rather I do not believe that those who supposedly were given the privilege of representing the people of Tonga, but supports uh, the, the doctrine of terrorism, should share the same house as others who uphold the law. Because I think before anyone has a right to vote every three or four years, he has a right to have breakfast, lunch and dinner. Has just called you guys a terrorist and boycotted um, Parliament. He says you're you're terrorists. What's your response to that? So, uh, what, what what did uh, David Hacker say? He, he called you terrorists. Terrorists. Yes, and you should not be in Parliament. Well, but that's uh, well. I think he has the right to say. But to me, I'm not a terrorist. Um, I, I I did my job. As a representative of the people, and um, not only outside but inside the house, I'm not a terrorist. I'm only doing. I'm only doing my job. I think the the, the speech made by the by the by King to Board of Fifth was good. He he's, he was calling for collective, uh, you know, work and. Uh, uh, he appealed to the, to the people to stand together and then work together to, you know, to build up uh, the economy uh, of, the, of the country. Okay, the King's speech is a clever, nice, uh, conciliatory speech with, with nothing. It's implicit in his speech from the front this morning that things will go away and you come together, tongue and way, love each other and we'll just do it without any solution to what is happening. That, that's how I read it. What are your demands at the moment relating to that? We want change now. We want the change implemented. We want to discuss that. There's, to rebuild Tonga and to reconstruct the damage, uh, there must be conciliation of all the parties. And to do that, I think the political reform must be seen to be put into order and build together. And I, I'm sure that that would be... Uh, a, Desire, not only desirable, but I think it, it's, a, it's a possible uh, move to try and resolve and reconstruct on. What we'll do today is to give you a little uh, walk around. <clears throat> when I say little, it means little. The impact on Tonga's people will linger for decades. The horror of how quickly this friendly island had turned on itself will remain for years. <laughs> 